Greetings, pen pals. We have a modern-ish pen. This is a 20-year-old pen from Bexley, uh, but it's unusual in that it's a modern pen with a sack. This is the Bexley sleeve filler. And at first glance, from a style perspective, it has sort of a pocket pen type style, but it's really not pocket pen sized. Here it is compared to a Lamy Safari and a Pilot Metropolitan. And as you can see, it's pretty much spot on size wise with these guys. It's only a tiny fraction of an inch shorter than these. Um, weighs in at 22 grams, so it's decently light. It's a mostly acrylic pen. And as you can see from here, this is an American-made pen made by Bexley in Columbus, Ohio. And this pen, as you can see, is from 2001. It has this um, uh, branding and dating. Um, in, it's actually engraved on the pen and then filled in, which looks uh, really, really uh, pretty nice. It's got gold trim all over the place. It's got a cap band and a trim ring here that match each other. Um, it has a posting indentation on the back end of the pen that matches the finial on the top of the cap. And the clip is a uh, uh, nothing particularly special clip, but it's a pretty nice functional um, uh, clip. Um, it's a uh, screw to uncap pen. It takes one and three quarter turns to unscrew. Um, it's okay lengthwise unposted. It really is designed to post. It really has uh, that nice mechanism there, although it is very, very long uh, when posted. Um, let's compare it to say a Pilot Metropolitan posted. And as you can see, it is, it is a mile longer. Than the uh, than the Pilot Metropolitan when posted, so we're talking about a uh, quite a long pen when posted, but again, not a heavy pen, so it doesn't present any kind of back weighting issues. It does look a little kind of goofy posted with all these trim rings kind of stacked up here, but um, but it is a nice uh, nice looking pen. The section is uh, a, a pretty nice, comfortable section. These threads don't pose any problem. Has a nice piece of flare at the end, and that flat and part of the flare of the section does match up with a ledge on the inside of the cap, which does a very, very effective job at keeping the nib from drying out. Speaking of nib, this is a, just a gorgeous nib. It's a number five size nib, 18 karat, two-tone gold. Um, it has a whole bunch of fairly elaborate skull work, really nice two-tone nib, has the Bexley logo, um, um, a B for broad and says 18K750. So it's a really, really nice nib. And it does feature a ebonite feed, which is uh, really, really uh, nice. Now, what does make this pen again a bit unusual, like we said, it's a modern pen with a sack, but it uses what's called a sleeve filler. So the way it works is you unscrew this and then it reveals, as you unscrew it, as you keep unscrewing, it will re reveal this spring push bar with, you can see the rubber sack right there. So you just simply squeeze on that to, uh, to activate the filling mechanism. And it holds a decent amount of ink for a sack fill pen. This doesn't come off. This is, this is basically you unscrew it and it just exposes this cutout here. And then when you're done, you just screw this uh, back. So this is the sleeve in the sleeve filler is this, is this, this, is this piece that, that, that's, that uh, screws in and out. Um, so um, there you go. It's a pretty sharp looking pen. Again, this is a pen that I think I like the way this pen looks aesthetically when it's capped. Um, I think when, for some reason, when it's posted, I think those aesthetics kind of just get lost for me because I just, I just don't, uh, you know, I, I, I think it looks a little goofy when uh, posted. But uh, again, pretty nice. I like the Bexley Columbus, Ohio, USA thing in the 2001 date here make it look a little bit distinctive, etc. So pretty, pretty nice um, uh, pen all in all. Um, but, 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 of course you're wondering how does it write? Because after all, as we've always said, pens were meant to write. This one, of course, being no exception. I'm gonna show you how it writes right now. Okay, folks, what we're writing with here today is a Bexley. Sleeve filler. And this features a 18 carat number five size nib. And this one is in broad. 
Um, this is a really nice writing nib. It is broad. It is, it is a decently broad nib, um, but that's, uh, you know, what you're getting for with a broad nib. So I really like it. It is, it is, it is quite smooth. It does flow very well. And, um, I would say it's, uh, definitely uh, on the above average size from a wetness, uh, perspective. So, um, you have that going for you, which is really, really nice in terms of reverse writing. It actually is not particularly scratchy, but, and it takes it down to what I would say is a extra, extra fine in that case. So you do have two big extremes between regular writing and reverse writing, which does make it kind of useful. And the reverse writing is definitely serviceable. Obviously it's not something you want to probably do for uh, an extended period of time, but the reverse writing is definitely uh, serviceable. So all in all, a very, very pleasant writing experience. Um, the thing is, this is a, a sack fill pen that still doesn't hold a ton of ink. It holds a good amount of ink for sack filled pen, but not a ton of ink. Plus it's abroad, plus it's kind of wet. So this is not a pen that's going to hold like a week's worth of uh, ink for everyday writing. This is the kind of pen, if you're going to be using it as a daily writer, you're going to probably need to fill it nearly every day, but you got to know what you're, uh, what you're getting in for, uh, with something like this. But again, I just think this is a really attractive pen very different kind of filling mechanism. You don't see that too often in modern pens. You especially don't see sacks in modern pens. Very rare. Um, the Conklin Mark Twain, which I did a video on a little while ago is another uh, one of those sort of modern pens with a sack, but again, just, just very, very, um, very unusual. I think the nib is just beautiful aesthetically here. And I also think the nib writes extremely, extremely well. What would be really nice is if all you folks could please like, comment, share, and subscribe. That would all be really, really welcome. So that I think will pretty much cover the basics of this pen. Um, let's talk about this ink now for a minute, shall we? Okay, folks, this ink is from Diamine. And this is 1864 blue black. And this is part of uh, Diamine's 150th anniversary series. So this is a, a sort of a, a special one. It's not a run of the mill one. It comes in a different kind of box and a very different bottle it comes in this triangular shaped bottle. Again, it was part of Diamine's 100th anniversary series. So um, the, basically the theory with these is if you kind of collect the whole series, it makes a giant circle. Um, so they had a bunch of different inks in this series, but there's a very, very nice ink, um, 1864 blue black. Um, let's take a look at um, the uh, uh, color card on this and see how it compares to some, um, to some other uh, blue black ink. So this is the ink we're talking about today. Diamine 1864 blue black. If you glob it on really heavy and you write really heavy with it, you do get a, uh, some sheen, which is really nice, but it definitely is a dark on it. And when you lay that down the ink with the, with the pen, you definitely, uh, is a blacker blue black ink. Um, as opposed to say something like Colorverse blue black, which, uh, is much lighter and definitely leans more towards the blue. Um, uh, another ink that might be comparable in terms of darkness to this one would be Colorverse Apollo 11, but again, also a light, a much lighter colored, uh, blue black. And here it is compared to Lamy blue black. Again, this is a darker blue black. So this is one of the darker blue blacks, uh, that I've encountered. Definitely a blue black. It's not a black, but it's definitely, uh, definitely, definitely leans, uh, darker in terms of uh, blue blacks, but it's a nice, uh, pretty ink. It's attractive ink. It writes, uh, it uh, writes well, um, and uh, you know, suitable for sort of everyday use, like a lot of blue blacks really are. Um, when you can't decide if you want a blue ink or a black ink, you go with blue black. That's, uh, that's pretty much uh, 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 how it works. Um, that's what this ink looks like on this, uh, Rhodia paper. Let's take a quick look at what it looks like on Tomoe River paper, shall we? All right. Like I said, what we're writing with here is diamine. 
1864 blue black and um, this is on Tomoe River paper and um, as you can see you know it's not a blue it's not a black it's a blue black so you definitely get that but this is definitely a darker blue black that definitely leans towards the black you do get a little bit of color variation um, on this Tomoe River paper which looks really really nice um, I think that might just about do it for this video for this week I certainly hope you enjoyed watching it because I sure enjoyed making it and as always until we see each other again have a great day Bye-bye.